Welcome back to the Don't Call Me Skinny podcast. Ready for another rant? Me too. Buckle up because today you're going to be hit with some hard truth bombs. And you know me, I don't hold anything back. If you like what you hear, be sure to rate it, review it, and share it with a friend. Watch out. Here is another Friday No Filter. Hello, hello, and happy Friday. All right, you guys. So just going to let you know, having a puppy is literally like having a newborn, at least at this age. Like the dog, literally, I'm like, oh, it's like, do you ever remember when you had a newborn baby? You're like, I'm going to go shower while they're sleeping really fast. That is literally what I'm doing right now in this podcast. I'm like, he's laying down. Maybe I can get it all done. <laughs> Maybe, right? We shall see. So if you hear me snapping or telling him to stop chewing on things, you know why. Uh, that is literally my life right now. Um, <laughs> making sure he's not chewing my blanket. Okay. So you guys, it is, gosh, we are hitting the midway point of October. I thought September moved quickly. Here we are, October already. We are getting ready to finish the fourth week. We are headed into the halfway point of Weight Loss for Real Women. You guys, I am so freaking proud of these ladies who keep showing up, keep pushing forward. They are not perfect. And that is a whole point. That is a whole entire purpose of this program is to learn that we don't have to be perfect. That is actually what somebody said in the check-in this week was like, I'm learning that I don't have to do everything all at once and it doesn't have to be done perfectly. Like, yes, that is a whole point. We are real women with real lives, with real problems, with real things going on that it doesn't always look pretty. It doesn't always look perfect. It doesn't always look how social media makes it seem and appear so simple, so easy, so perfect. That is not real. That is not real. Okay. So something that I want to pull out, we um, talked about, if you guys did not have an opportunity to go listen to that part two uh, with Jillian, please go listen to it. Um, it's really good information. And it's, again, it's from a perspective of somebody that one, isn't my client. So like nothing that we talk about there has anything to do with my training. It's all her own personal or my own personal experience with fad diets, why they don't work, why they are preying on women's emotions, why uh, we tend to gravitate towards them, why they make it seem so simple, so easy, right? Um, and there, so there's a couple things I want to talk about today as, as I look to see if he's actually chewing on my stuff again. Okay. He's sleeping. Okay. So there's a couple of things I want to pull out, sorry, uh, about this today. The first thing is, is that we actually had a group call, um, with my business coach and it was a really, oh, he moved again. God, it was a really, really good call because, you know, I'm a big believer in always working with my school within my scope of practice. It's something that I pride myself on. It is my job to do that. And he's playing again. This is so great. This is so wonderful. Um, it is my job to do that is to only stick within my scope, right? Oftentimes women that come to me typically have some other issues that seeking outside help outside and there we go. Seeking outside help would be beneficial. That one. There we go. Uh, seeking outside help would be more beneficial than necessarily like uh, than what I'm able to offer. And so I think as women that we talked about this, Jillian and I talked about this, is accepting responsibility for what we've done, accepting the fact that we put ourselves in a position and now it is our responsibility to get it out, accepting this position that we have to take take within our life. And the problem here is it's very difficult because as a coach, I feel very obligated towards my clients. I feel um, if my clients are struggling, if my clients are having a hard week, if my clients are feeling not so great about themselves, if they're not feeling positive about the process, I internalize those things. I make them sometimes about me, which is kind of a mistake because it's really not about me, um, but it's because I care. And a coach that cares would care if their clients aren't feeling great about the process. But here's what I know. It is not my fault or even my client's fault necessarily for why they are the way they are, right? There are experiences. There are things in our life that happen that 
kind of put us down a trajectory. They put us down a path of making decisions. And those decisions that we make are based off of our experiences. And those experiences that we have lead us down a path, right? And so it's not necessarily anybody's fault for the choices, the decisions, right? In this specific case, I don't think it's necessarily anybody's fault that we go towards fad diets. That they prey on us. They prey on our emotions. They play on our pocketbooks. They prey on a, a hope, a dream, a, a wish, and a prayer. They prey on all this stuff. And no, it's no wonder. It's no wonder. And the other piece of that is that it's like, it's simple, right? It's simple to cut out carbs. That's easy. Okay, I can do that. It's simple to go take a pill. It's simple to get a shot. It's simple to just be told what the fuck to do. It's not simple to figure it out, right? Or to make decisions on your own. And so while it's not our fault, right? And, and I want to be super clear. While it's not our fault, we made some of these decisions and we ended up in this place, is our responsibility. It is our responsibility. It is our responsibility. I'm going to say that over and over again, because yes, you want to know what I, I, I was in a shit relationship in a shit marriage for however long. And right. Is it my fault? He was a piece of shit. No, it's not my fault. But was it my responsibility to get myself and my children out of a sit- shitty situation? Yeah, it was. It wasn't my fault he treated me like crap. It wasn't my fault he left me like side, like trash on the side of the road. But it was my responsibility to fix that situation, to change that situation if I wanted something different. And the same goes for my health. I made choices because of my previous experiences that got me to 240 pounds, probably 250, if we're going to be super honest. I just know what I was at one point. <laughs> okay. Um, but I'm, I know I was heavier than what I actually recorded. Uh, I just didn't get on the scale. So <clears throat> for, for namesake, we'll just call it 240 pounds. I made choices and decisions that got me to 240 pounds. Was it all my fault? Probably not. Right. My experiences kind of led me to where I ended up, but it was my responsibility of accepting that I got myself in that position. And that is hard. That is a difficult thing to accept, to to have to kind of look yourself in the mirror and go, yeah, I did that. Like I, that's, I did that. That's my fault. And I got myself there. And now it is my job and my responsibility to get myself out of that spot. And so when we look at it like that, where it's, it's, you know, because we don't want to do the blame game, right? We we don't want to say, oh, you know, you're not trying hard enough. You're not doing this be- good enough. You're not doing that good enough. That's not what it's about. It's about the experiences that allow us to make those decisions, but then how we change and accept that those decisions got us there. Okay. So that's something, you know, one piece that I wanted to talk about. And then kind of one thing that I even touched on was the simplicity of the fad diets. It's easy to do. Those are easy. It's easy to put shit in container and count, you know, do that. It's easy to track a point. I can count to 22 way better than I can 100 grams of protein and 220 grams of carbs and 68 grams of fat and make it all fit and make it all work. That is way easier to do than than just putting some shit in the containers or counting to 22 points. Or that's way harder to do. Sorry, it's way easier for me just to do that really quick thing. It's way easier for me to take a pill. It's way easier for me to drink a pink drink. It's way easier for me to do those things. To drink a protein shake. That's just simple. And so we want to get out of this. After we accept the responsibility, we try to get out of it every way, the easy way that we can, the easiest ways that we can, instead of doing the hard shit that we avoided to begin with for obvious reasons. Like there's reasons why we avoided the hard shit to start. And there's reasons why we made the choices that we did to get where we did. And now we just want to avoid the the tough work that's going to get us out of that spot. And the unfortunate part is you can't. You can't avoid the tough work. You can't avoid the hard choices, the decisions. And then the acceptance that while it may not be your fault, it is your responsibility. So 
On that note, you guys, I hope you have a fantastic weekend. I hope you guys, uh, I know the sun finally today is shining in the state of Michigan. Um, I'm not sure how long it'll last, but I don't think long. (laughs) I don't think it's going to be very long at all. So on that note, you guys, I hope you have a great weekend. Get outside, get in some movement. You guys, you guys can also get into my free Facebook group. I have dropped some uh, new guides in there. Uh, So that link is in the show notes. And again, I just wanted to reiterate, uh, weight loss for real women. You guys are killing it. It will be relaunching right around Thanksgiving, headed right through the new year. Because you guys, this is the time of year where nobody has time, nobody can do it, and we are going to set ourselves up for success. So I'm excited about the next already group that's going to be coming in, and the ladies are going to crush it through the holidays. You are all going to be one step ahead for your quote unquote New Year's resolution. So great job. I'm excited for you already. On that note, you guys, have a fantastic Friday.